Okay, here we go. Just gotta get everything into position. bad. Been pretty tired, but... Time um, to go kick that witch's ass. Yeah. Just going to need a quick moment while I get everything set. People firing off fireworks. It's not even July yet. Yeah, it's a bit soon for that. I understand firing off fireworks, you know, like a day before or after the 4th, but come on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some people, I guess, don't even think they need an excuse. They just... They it... just live to be jackasses. <laughs> mm -hmm. <sighs> Welcome to America. Go. Yep. So lately I've been uh, playing through uh, uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I've been having fun with that. Be be better than not having fun. It's actually a good. I mean, I spent only 10 bucks on it. It was on sale for that little. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. And let's be honest. It is really always going to be satisfying to force push some move off the ledge. And boy, the game gives you so many opportunities to pull that one off. Of course, pushing is fun. Ah, Argyle, just in time to go watch uh, and go kill the world. Yeah. Hey, there we go, my head's up to Okay, I, I was kind of wondering if that was going to be a situation. Uh, oh, heck. Yeah, Argle Jedi Fallen Order, really fun. Yeah, he mentioned. Good combo of, of Nathan Drake and uh, Dark Souls. Yeah. So, I, I admit I am playing on the easiest difficulty because I'm a wuss. Oh, it's fucking virgin with the fulfilled Coward. I 
actually had to learn how to block. <laughs> oh no. And gas babe. Alright, I remembered to block the spell. <laughs> you know, it, at, at the moment, Andrew, it sounds like your, um, your 1940s radio presenter. Really? <laughs> Yeah. You're on the radio! <laughs> so, would, would, would you say this sounds worse than previous times I've spoken on a uh, mobile? Actually, I'm okay with this. I mean, yeah, the quality is... by all means worse, but... It actually doesn't sound half bad if you go by, you sound like you're on the radio. Uh, I'm, I'm, I might have to switch up. I purposefully bought a microphone thinking it would be better than my Bluetooth one, but I guess it's actually pretty shit. Uh. Whoa, what? Yeah. Like, I went out and got, like, a wired thing. So, I, meanwhile, uh, am work, I'm gold rank, working up those ranks, uh, in, uh, Master Duel. My deck is kind of a beast. Uh, what are you playing with? Medolce. Ah. Yeah, those could be really fun. Yeah, I can OTK. Yeah. I mean, pretty much every archetype has to OTK or else it's not even going to qualify for the meta. <laughs> Look, that's kind of why I stopped playing. The game got too bad. Mm, no, not every... Okay. So... That's why there are a lot of cards to... There are a lot of cards to stop OTKs. Uh, so therefore the good meta decks are ones that can OTK, but can also usually recover when their combo has been stopped. I suppose that's fair, but the game is still too fast for me. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, just, you're just... You're just upset that you're... Your gig, your ancient gear golems, or your cyber dragon deck are uh, the meta as they used to be. <laughs> no, I'm just upset that I can do one turn and then some asshole plays solitaire for two minutes and then, oh, by the way, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm more upset about getting solitaire to death. Uh. Yeah, that's what it feels like now. Yeah, I, I kind of also want to get back into the Pokemon TCG, but it's like, it feels so weird that it's like, it's like, oh yes, the new Gardevoir deck has nothing to do with fairies because fairies are no longer a thing in the card game. Mm -hmm. Hold up, what? Yeah. Yeah, the, the fairy basic energy is no longer in rotation and they don't print uh, Pokemon with fairy typing. They're now basically under the psychic umbrella. Yeah. Not dumb. Not really, because if you, it's like, it's like they didn't really have a need a reason to remove it. Well, they didn't really have a reason to remove it. But at the same time, when you look at it, it's like there's no poison typing. That's actually now under dark. Yeah, fair enough, but it's still. Of course, uh, there's no ice typing, it's water. Yeah. That is kind of one of the frustrating things. I mean, at the same time, it, it's, it is just what works, but it's like... It is kind of funny seeing just how much, like, things get, uh, compressed in terms of the typings into the basic energies for the card game. Yeah, I think, like, 
that's the one thing about the Pokemon TCG that just really comes across as like super annoying is that it's like the, a deck that you build is not going to be something that you can just like update for like later seasons. You may have to eventually just like either it becomes unplayable because the cards are no longer uh, in the standard format. Or they're just, it's just straight up, oh, cards in that one set are just straight up not in rotation. Yeah. Yeah, I hate that. Or at least with Yu-Gi-Oh, it's like, okay, yep, uh, looks like some of the cards in my deck are on the, um, limited list, so I can at least, you know, adjust and still use my deck. Yeah. I don't know when you think about magic, but that, that that's a whole other can of worms. Look, I I just can't afford it. For, oh, that's, for... that's why Master Duel is great. Yeah, thank God for, for programs and for that but Yeah. For me it's been kind of a case of I I have not been seriously into the Pokemon TCG like as much as I was into like say Magic the Gathering. Like I still buy a bunch of cards, but mostly it's because it's like, ooh, here's this little box set that has a little Sylveon figurine in it, or has this yeah. other thing in it, and like, well, yeah, I, I, like, I want to buy the Chachki, the card you just the bonus. <laughs> And it's like, okay, as a bonus, I get one of these uh, freaking little uh, thingos that uh, uh, I get a code that I can use to get something online. And, oh, I guess I'll play with this deck online for a while. Why not? Yeah, okay. Pokemon TCG had the right idea with that. That needs to be more of a thing. Mm. Yeah. Watch the anime though, as insane it's, as it'll get. It's like one thing that like still surprises me is that um, when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to freaking Gundam, it's like they have a series called Build Fighters where it's basically uh, you know you put your gunpla together. Then you put them in a machine that then turns them into like actual combat capable, you know, bloody robots. Mm -hmm. And they don't make yeah, them yeah, it, it, there's like no, like, I'm like, why, why haven't they actually just like made that a thing for like, like, oh yes, you can, you know, you have this uh free-to-play video game, but if you go and buy a Gunpla kit and scan it in, like, you know, Toys to Life. Yeah? Mm hmm You get a nice little bonus. Although at that point, why don't you bring Metabots back? Because that's yeah. basically it. Yeah. And that would have been a big thing if they had a bigger push here in America. I mean, it might have worked. <laughs> I mean, kids love robots. Kids love collecting shit. And a pretty decent anime. Chicks also love giant robots. Oh hell yeah, that's just the bonus. <laughs> like that's the bonus. <laughs> it's a video that Sh uh, Shoa had uh, shown me. It's about a uh, build fighters, where a guy actually picks up a chick by setting her a freaking um, uh, RX-78 gumper. He's like, he sees her at a cafe. She's just at like a cafe, but he, the waiter comes up. It's like, here, this is a gift from the gentleman over there. And she un like opens it up and it's a freaking, yeah, RX-78 model kit or gumpler. And she, he, she's just like, oh my. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like you might've been a little too forward with that, but. Uh... <laughs> 
Hey, this is the modern era. Hey, we are changing the rules. <laughs> it used to be you, you pick up a chick by giving her a free drink. Now, you get her a, her a $200 gun kit. <laughs> But no, that is actually kind of, that is actually really funny. Yeah. I almost could have seen a scene like that in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yeah. right? Give her a, give her a rare card. I'ma get that yeah. bitch a luster soldier. Bitches love <laughs> luster soldier. Exactly! <laughs> exactly! Something like that! <laughs> Like, you would just do this in, like, any anime or property where, you know, they're collecting something. Yeah. And the joke will always work. That's 69 eggs. Nice. Very nice. Dang it. God, I I have God, I suck so much at like I know how those leading shots work, but uh, Okay. Alright, I'm gonna die, but I just kind of like really concentrate whenever she does the frickin' um, fireball shot. Yeah. Remind myself not to just run forward. Gotta like zigzag and stuff. There we go. <sighs> I really should go rewatch. Go back through. You get actually go through. You get blame. <laughs> it's card games in the Matrix. Also, card games on hoverboard. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. Hmm. You know, you could probably make a, a, a joke about how it's like, oh, you have some game. Uh, there, there's almost kind of a gambling aspect of sorts to opening up cards or whatever. Card games in casinos! Wait. <laughs> Ironically, I don't I don't think I've ever actually seen a casino in Yu-Gi-Oh! I've seen like underground like duel arenas where I presume gambling is being done. You know, like that time Zane took on, you know. Mike Tyson. Yeah, I. So, I've been like because I've been getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh, I've been like re uh, catching up on like well, continuing from where I last watched GX, and it's like freaking Zane is dying of like he's basically got heart problems now that happens when he duels, all because of. The time he went into freaking 
underground dueling. I mean, you have to admit, I mean, if you're going around with freaking, like, in a suitcase, literal electroshock collars, that you just whip out whatever you feel like, yeah, I feel like that might fuck your heart up. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I always laugh. I, I love when they, when he and Alistair are just like infiltrating. Like, you think they'll have it in my spot? I'm having you for like, They're big and ugly. Of course they'll have it in your spot. <laughs> I like Alistair. I like his, how snarky he can get. And of course, made it smoopy. Yeah, yeah. You hear that spaded? I'm coming for ya! <laughs> yeah... I think Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is an example of why dub are still great. Yeah. Cause the dub followed the spirit of Yu-Gi-Oh! but... Basically reminded us, yeah, this is about a children's card game. Let's lighten up just a smidge. <laughs> And hey, when the villains wanted to be intimidated, they were intimidated, right? Mm. Okay, so maybe some of the vi the one-off villains weren't. Like, like Escargoon sounding warrior. And Lorenzo, the gamer extraordinaire. And who could forget Mike Tyson? <laughs> Like, I know what they were going for, but do they really have to make him call Zane a poopy head? Eh. Uh, you know, for kids. <laughs> yes! Deadly underground dueling where if you take life points there, you get shot violently in front of a crowd of masked people. Yeah, yeah for kids! <laughs> Or about that time in Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, where Yusei goes to an old west town where people will gamble with their lives to basically become slaves in a mine. I mean, I wouldn't know that one. Until they die! I have not gotten up to 5Ds yet. Oh yeah, you're gonna have fun with the western. <laughs> It'll be great. They, their dual discs are literally pistols. Oh like, god. Like, it's a pistol, but it unfolds into a duel that they, like, quick draw them and everything. Uh... <laughs> uh... Yeah, it's definitely one of the weirder filler arts. And that's saying something. Uh... Although, admittingly, it is a shame that 5Ds never... Okay, they technically ended 5Ds, but it's one of those situations where they truncated the last part. Eh. Uh, although, I will say, I really wish I could be in that... I could see that alternate timeline where they finished GX. I really want to know how they would have... Dub at last season. It, it, it's like trying, it's just like, how the hell are they gonna dump the rest of One Piece? Like, what happens when they get to Amazon Blue? Do you know how much editing they're gonna have to do with that much cleavage? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Come on, I'm basically shoving my face right in there. No problem. Blocks. Oh. Oh no. Oh, I can't just plug them all into one hole. Uh. Oh, that's bullshit. Okay. okay. Two sides filled. Oh, I. Mm. getting further and further, you're learning things, and you're starting to get the rhythm. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I... can do this. Like, I can get through the first, like, most of it while only taking a few hits, which is good in my opinion. I just gotta really nail down avoiding those fireballs. Yeah. Okay, that was just kind of dumb on my on my part. Bring it on, old lady. was the charm, but I guess not. You know, I recently watched the video on how many jumps it takes to beat Bandit Dewey and Bandit Dewey. Probably yeah. Dewey has less than ten. Seems weird for a platformer. Yeah, I know. The Dewey, of course, has a ton.
damage. Uh, of course, it's like just in the gap of where I was firing. So close. Yeah. Like, I feel like I've been kind of going through these moments where I keep thinking she's going to be sitting still, but then she'll move or... Yeah. Jinjo's activated. As soon as they decide to appear. Zack, 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 Zack. 
dumb incoming block. Yeah, he's done it. He's done it, yes! Yes! Mega Ultra Jinjo! Arise, Jinjo! Arise! Arise, Jinjo! Arise! <laughs> yeah, just get Mumbo saying that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can just see him do it. Yeah. <laughs> Even under pressure, she keeps up the rhyme. <laughs> I see what you did there. And uh, uh, ju there's just a hot babe there. All of a sudden. I mean, who, who? without difficult that fight. Oh gosh, he's got two melons. Oh, oh, I see what they did there. <laughs> wow, Rare, you really... <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess this is a good reward for that really tough fight. Once more. Banjo, you've now saved your sister and and killed the evil witch. What are you gonna do now? I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, this really is a good game. Got a few problems, but. There's a reason why it's a classic. Yeah, it's 
there's a few things that are like a bit rough about it that you know just kind of comes from it being you know part of that generation of when they were still kind of figuring out 3d but given that mm -hmm. it it was pretty fun pretty decently put together it's I love how the pool is big black <laughs> Uh, sorry, go ahead. I, I, I was just gonna say that there were some things that didn't quite feel so intuitive, or there was some, like, you know, there was some difficulty, like, trying to get into some stuff, but, like, I, I have a feeling that, like, if I played this game as a... Okay, well, I did technically rent this game once as a kid. If I played this game as a kid and I actually owned it and wasn't traumatized by the transformation sequence from the game over... I could see myself, like, getting into this and really exploring the place and, like, getting used to, like, how, um, the layout of Grunty's Lair was and, like, you know, getting 100%ing on, like, finding musical notes and all that. Yeah. I will say that a lot of the problems do get solved in Banjo-Tooie. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So what are you going to do after this? Well, I know I plan for my next uh, big stream thing to be um, Kirby 64. Oh, yeah. F figure will be... I figure it'll be nice to do just a nice chill 2D thing I've done before. A nice chill game where eventually you get to fight the Demi, fight evil Dark Angel. But that's hey, what you're saying. Are you addressing us, Argo? Yeah, what, like, what'd you say was next? Uh, Kirby, Kirby 64, the, the Crystal Shards. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ancient ones are very silly looking. Yes, yes they are. Yeah, this is something I do miss. I miss the uh, enemy roll call. <laughs> there, there is just something so charming, right? Yeah. Especially when the name is like so far off what you think it's gonna be. <laughs> like Mum Mum. Yeah, exactly. Oh, pissed up. That's his name. Yes, that's the name of that derpy snake. Oh my God, the tumbler glass containing the jiggy head. <laughs> Exactly! Uh, Tumblr. Teehee, yeah. oh god. Fun fact, that pit, that painting it was actually the, uh, that was the original, like, uh, enemy and with their, like, Project Dream. Oh yeah, like, they, I know they had, like, I think it was like a SNES uh, RPG or something planned. Point. Yeah, that captain actually does show up in uh, Banjo Tooie at uh, Jolly Roger Bay. That boom box, yeah, that, that's an appropriate name. Lots of rainbow. Yum. Uh, oh, oh, they're grublins. Okay. Legally distinct from goblins, of course. Of course. Snare bear. Zubbas. Okay. Zub-zub. 
You know what? Maybe that would be a character worth making at some point. Uh, you know, get 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 yourself a goblin ranger together. Call him Goblin Hood. <laughs> Steal from the tall and give to the short. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, look, there's Big Melon Lady. Yeah. Hey, lady, get your big melons over here. Oh, oh my oh, I like uh, some of the bananas too. Bananas are good for you. A pictures of things secret used. Oh yes. Yeah, this was the uh, the swap. Stop and swap. Oh god. Yeah, go fuck yourself, Mumbo. Update with who? Renty's sister? I think I think even the ugly ones could do better. <laughs> Hell, I think even Klungo's getting more than him. Oh my god, even then they were calling it Banjo Tilly. <laughs> Yeah, they even reference at the end of 2E. I'll be back in Banjo 3E. Yeah. And they, they, they had a lot of confidence they'd be having a sequel. I mean, then, then, then again, they did work out for them, so... They did technically get a sequel, but it ain't Banjo 3. I mean, at least in the yeah. form of, like, here with getting to Banjo 2E. Yeah. <sighs> Still a classic. <laughs> nice to see you get through it. Yep. Now let's go enjoy another class. Yep. And if I get if I get the chance to, to play Banjo Tui at some point, I think I'll go ahead and do that. This is uh this has encouraged me. You know what? Though for now, I think I might close things out with another game. Have some fun. Well, Steam Summer Sale is starting tomorrow. What are you guys yep. gonna do? I don't know. Yeah. I haven't really got anything at the moment. Don't know what's gonna be on moment. sale. I'm hoping some of them Disgaea games are on sale. I mean, that seems reasonable. Yeah. Like this guy at four with complete. We're all be able to play with Tyrant Valvatores, who's so broken. His literal ability is: I kill an opponent, he becomes an ally. Yeah, just bring him back. He's an ally. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Load runner. Yeah. Legacy. <laughs> The hell's load runner? It, it's a oh, real word. load. Uh huh, uh huh. It's old school. Yeah, I can sort of tell that. And let's see, I think I should have a certain thing set. Yeah. Now there's a pre-selected thing here, but one thing that is fun about this uh, particular uh, version or whatever of Load Runner is that you can make a custom character. Yeah, is this basically like um that uh, that Zelda-like game? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. That Scott the Waz uses. For yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I can't remember the name though. It's like I, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I forget what that was too. Yeah, but then hey, so you got Astra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is just like a remake of well, old school uh, like Amstrad game, I want to say. And like I think it was on Amiga. I mean, it, it's I mean, Load Runner's been on a whole lot of things by this point. Like I know it was rather the I know that the Famicom version was famously very successful in uh in Japan. No kidding. There was there was a Famicom. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Pretty simple premise. It's like you zap up blocks to open things up and you collect all the gold and then you leave the level. And eventually enemies show up. Yeah. Not exactly my cup of tea, but there's a certain charm about these games. I mean, I'm more of a, if I want to get puzzled myself, I like the match four games. You know, like, uh, Puzzle Quest? Mm-hmm. I don't always go for this kind of thing myself, either, but every once in a while, a nice, uh... A nice little, uh, thing like this can be nice. Oh, definitely. It's just nice there's variety in gaming. Mm-hmm. And it's nice to I see that there are efforts like this to continue to have old-school games be, uh... Be present. I gotta climb up. Yeah. And what's nice about this is that, uh, like, they got this presentation here with this kind of voxel aesthetic, but they've also got, uh, like, original pixel graphic version of the game available as a thing. the legacy alive. Mm -hmm. Now it's nice to have them include like the creative options like for creating a uh, custom character. Like I really wish they would let the custom character be present in these cutscene things. Because like, yeah. it, it, like it would be absolutely no effort to just say, okay, swap out the model. But there might be more effort, but I know what you mean. Yeah. Because like, I know, I know that is kind of the thing of how it is with so many um games where it's like, yeah, it's like, I know that even when it comes to like, oh yeah, you port a thing over, I know that there is like some degree of effort that has to go into it. Hmm. It's just, yeah, like... Not precisely the same. Sucker! <laughs> yeah, I won't make a Nastra for this, just because it's like... Yeah, a game where you go around... Stealing Get gold and uh, trapping yeah. bad guys feels like it fits her. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, if I were to make a custom character, like, if I could, I almost want to go for, like, Solid Snake. Just dun 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 <laughs> I don't know, it's just, I don't know. Dumb, but it might work. Is he, like, stuck on there? Apparently so. 
Oh, oh. Wow. What an asshole. Hmm. Can I get him out without touching him? Okay. Well, unfortunately, I'm getting close to pass now. Fair enough. The meds are starting to kick in. Yeah, I'll probably be stopping in a few minutes. Huh, time flies. But hey, at the very least, you you finish what you set out to do. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday, we'll, we'll start anew, right? Mm hmm. Well, good night. Good night. Good night. played myself. I love making people surrender with this deck of mine. <laughs> in, in, in what fashion are you doing so? So, basically, um, it's like I can get, I can one turn kill, uh, and I've got so much recovery that uh, I can, like, even if they stop my combo on that turn, I can usually get regain the momentum almost immediately. So like people realize they've tried to stop me and haven't been able to, so it's just like, well, I can no longer do anything and he can, you know, do lethal damage, so. I'm calling it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had the satisfaction of being able to do that, but that seems like that would be awesome to, to do at least once in my life. Yeah. And the Medolce deck is like one of my favorites. It's also a really cute archetype if you don't know what it is. Um, basically, uh, from what I understand, Medolce means like magical doll dessert. I think that's what the name, like the pun name is kind of meant to be. Okay, as you have that. That feels like that makes sense in my head, cause, like, because then I was thinking, oh yeah, Dolce, like Dolce de Lache or whatever it is. Yeah. So it's a bunch of cute, like dessert-based uh, dolls, like um, uh, Puddingcess, you know, Princess Pudding. Uh, Queen Tiramisu. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, Mage Lean, which is like, uh, Mage, whatever. Um, and Jelly, so Angel Jelly. And of course, the kind of mascot card is, uh, Putting sus uh, chocolate a la mode. So she gets like a, a brown dress and 
you know, she becomes chocolate pudding. <laughs> nice. Ah, yes, and there's also a nun, which is Sistart. Sister Tart. Nice. And is like, is there any like particular gameplay element that they do, or? Yeah, so like, the whole, one of the big things about them is like, every time one of them gets sent to the graveyard, basically, um, it can be shuffled right back into the deck. Hmm. Um, and uh. The gameplay about them really is about special, like, you just stack special summons, so it's like, um, you use, uh, Petting Sessa, which is basically, like, the, the little sister of Pudding Sess. When you, if you have no monsters in your graveyard, you can special summon her. When she is special summoned, she can then special summon another Madolce monster from your deck but uh, reduces their level by one so you use her to summon Pudding Cess which then turns Pudding Cess into a level four monster you then XYZ summon uh, Teacher Glass Souffle and then uh, you use Teacher Glass Souffle to uh, you use her special ability, which requires discarding one of your materials, um, which is a component of XYZ summoning. Um, once she has activated that, you can then layer on chocolate our mode. Use her special ability to grab a card from your graveyard, and as you grab that card from your graveyard, it allows you to special summon another Madolce monster. So it's essentially all about manipulating your graveyard and getting special summons by doing so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, asked, I was trying to think of the best way to explain it, so I had to sort of start doing this step by step to then realize, yes, you special summon by resurrecting from your graveyard, more or less. <laughs> Which to me feels like, huh, that, that, that almost indeed feels like they managed to translate perfectly into gameplay terms. It doesn't matter if they go to the graveyard or not. There's always room for dessert in play. Yep. <laughs> Uh. And it's funny because it's like there's another archetype that is really cute uh, called Ghost Trick where they're a bunch of uh, haunted toys. Basically, it's the Ruby deck. Fair enough. So it's a, it's a common thing that you will see in like fan art of people having Madolce vs Ghost Trick. So it's a bunch of cute dolls just having the cutest battle ever. <laughs> oh. Sounds adorable indeed. That should call it for the stream, and I should probably call it for, like, actual bedtime as well. I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, I guess it isn't that late. I mean, uh -huh. Maybe I probably should. 
I should clear up a few things, but yeah. Yeah, thank you for stopping by. No worries. <laughs>